The Wisdom of Confucius Chapter 1 To learn, said the Master, and then to practice opportunely what one has learned, does not this bring with it a sense of satisfaction? To have associates in study coming to one from distant parts, does not this also mean pleasure in store? And are not those who, while not comprehending all that is said, still remain not unpleased to hear, men of the superior order? A saying of the scholar you. It is rarely the case, that those who act the part of true men, in regard to their duty to parents and elder brothers, are at the same time willing to turn currishly upon their superiors, it has never yet been the case, that such as desire not to commit that offense, have been men willing to promote anarchy or disorder. Men of superior mind, busy themselves first in getting at the root of things, and when they have succeeded in this, the right course is open to them. Well, are not filial piety and friendly subordination among brothers, a root of that right feeling which is owned generally from man to man? The master observed, rarely do we meet with the right feeling due from one man to another, where there is fine speech and studied mean. The scholar Tsong once said of himself, on three points I examine myself daily, viz, whether, in looking after other people's interests, I have not been acting wholeheartedly, whether, in my intercourse with friends, I have not been true, and whether, after teaching, I have not myself been practicing what I have taught. The master, once observed that to rule well, one of the larger states meant strict attention, to its affairs and conscientiousness on the part of the ruler, careful husbanding of its resources, with at the same time a tender care for the interests of all classes, and the employing of the masses in the public service at suitable seasons. Let young people, said he, show filial piety at home, respectfulness towards their elders when away from home, let them be circumspect, be truthful, their love going out freely towards all, cultivating goodwill to men. And if, in such a walk, there be time or energy left for other things, let them employ it in the acquisition of literary or artistic accomplishments. The disciple Tsushaya said, The appreciation of worth in men of worth, thus diverting the mind from lascivious desires, ministering to parents, while one is the most capable of so doing, serving one's ruler, when one is able to devote himself entirely to that object, being sincere in one's language, in intercourse with friends, this I certainly must call evidence of learning, though others may say there has been no learning. Sayings of the Master If the great man be not grave, he will not be revered, neither can his learning be solid. Solid. Give prominent place to loyalty and sincerity. Have no associates in study who are not advanced somewhat like yourself. When you have erred, be not afraid to correct yourself. A saying of the scholar song. The virtue of the people is renewed and enriched when attention is seen to be paid to the departed, and the remembrance of distant ancestors kept and cherished. Tsuz Ken put this query to his fellow disciple Tsuz Kun, said he, when our master comes to this or that state, he learns without fail how it is being governed. Does he investigate matters? Or are the facts given him? Tsuz Kung answered, our master is a man of pleasant manners and of probity, courteous, moderate, and unassuming, it is by his being such that he arrives at the facts. Is not his way of arriving at things different from that of others? A saying of the master. He who, after three years observation, of the will of his father when alive, or of his past conduct if dead, does not deviate from that father's ways, is entitled to be called a dutiful son. Sayings of the scholar you. For the practice of the rules of propriety, one excellent way is to be natural. This naturalness became a great grace, in the practice of kings of former times, let everyone, small or great, follow their example. It is not, however, always practicable, and it is not so in the case of a person who does things naturally, knowing that he should act so, and yet who neglects to regulate his acts according to the rules. When truth and right are hand in hand, a statement will bear repetition. When respectfulness and propriety go hand in hand, disgrace and shame are kept afar off. Remove all occasion for alienating those, to whom you are bound by close ties, and you have them still to resort to. A saying of the master. The man of greater mind who, when he is eating, craves not to eat to the full, who has a home, but craves not for comforts in it, who is active and earnest in his work, and careful in his words, 
who makes towards men of high principle, and so maintains his own rectitude, that man may be styled a devoted student. Sus Kung asked, What say you, sir, of the poor who do not cringe and fawn, and what of the rich who are without pride and haughtiness? They are passable, the master replied, yet they are scarcely in the same category as the poor who are happy, and the rich who love propriety. In the Book of the Odes, Sus Kung went on to say, We read of one. Polished, as by the knife and file, the graving tool, the smoothing stone. Does that coincide with your remark? Ah! Such as you, replied the master, may well commence a discussion on the odes. If one tell you how a thing goes, you know what ought to come. It does not greatly concern me, said the master, that men do not know me, my great concern is, my not knowing them.